big shit. All right, welcome to another edition of Who's That DJ. My name is JSG, and I'll be going around the country talking to different DJs, um, past and present, getting there. I um, get into talking to them about what they do, understanding their journey, and seeing how they got to where they've got. So today, I have a very, very special guest with me, and a long time good friend of mine. Godfather, what's happening, brother? How you doing, bro? All good, man. All good. Yeah, I'm good, man. I'm good. Right. So, how we normally start the shows is we basically get uh, the DJ to introduce himself okay. and like give them a little backstory about who they are, where they come from. Wow. So, <laughs> yeah. Tell us who you are. <laughs> okay. So we'll give us your backstory. I go by the name of DJ Godfather. Um, I've been DJ since 2002 officially. That's when I got my first book in October 2002. Um, I specialise in R and B, mainly old school. That's it really. I can play other genres as well obviously. Yeah, but yeah, yeah. my main focus is old school R and B, mm-hmm. old school hip hop, a little bit of dancehall as well. I play garage and, and jungle as well. Okay. Um, cool, cool. So what what is what got you into DJ and like what was it about the music that said, Yeah, I wanna turn around and be a DJ? Um I've always liked music from when I was a little boy anyway. Mm-hmm. My dad used to buy loads of records and all that kind of stuff, but he's more a reggae and soul man. Mm-hmm. Um, and I remember going to it was secondary school, really, yeah. when Jodeci first came out, and that was the first time I thought, yeah, this 90s R&B sound is, I like this. Mm-hmm. So I always used to buy CDs and stuff like that. Yeah. Then I started raving, and I remember going to Gas Club, and there was a DJ called Ease Back. Those mm-hmm. of you who know your DJs will know about this guy. He used to warm up at Gas Club on a Tuesday, the night was called Yum Yums. He used to warm up for George K and Jigs. Right. And I was like, yeah, this spread is bad. Like, he used to play the tunes that no one else would play. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. And I thought, yeah, I like this. Because cool. that's what I like, the tunes mm-hmm. that no one else would play. Yeah. And that was it, really. Um, I got into to just raving from then. And then I lived in Derby for a little while. Uh-huh. And, um, I learned to DJ up there, shout out Ruckus from Birmingham, mm. uh, and that was it. Came back down to London and, and linked up my god brother Mark, and um, yeah, the rest is history. Yeah, cool, cool. All right, cool. So <clears throat> DJ, and we say since two thousand and two yeah. up and down. Where was your Where was your first book? Do you remember? It how was that uh, came about? Uh, yeah, it was at City University. The night was called Pressure Cooker. Mm-hmm. Um, as again, shout out to my boy Mark T, my god brother, we're more like family, so we call each other cousins. I remember he called me and he's like, look, um, got a booking for you. And I was like, bro, am I ready for this? Like, yeah. Do I really want to do this? I was like, yeah, go on, just do it. Mm-hmm. So it was me, Shorty Blitz, yeah. Nick Smooth, and a female DJ called Nikki. Yeah. It was really good, yeah. Like, I enjoyed it. It was a nice crowd. Mm-hmm. And then just rolled on from there. From now, I, t- I followed him. Okay. He used to get a lot of West End bookings. Yeah, so he yeah. used to play in Ten Rooms, Mayfair Club, mm-hmm. um, Planet Hollywood at the time as well. So, yeah. right. cool, cool. Okay, so one of the things that I wanted to talk to you about was obviously you run an event called Remember the Time. Yeah. So, which is a night dedicated to old school R&B and all those other genres of music from like 90s, early 2000s. Yeah? That's right. Yeah. So, talk to me behind the ideas of how that night came about um and yeah what the purpose of it is and all that sort of stuff um again i think it came from going out Mm -hmm. going to certain other old school events yeah and just thinking oh these like they're good Mm -hmm. don't get me wrong for me 90s is the best era of music hands down yeah but you go to certain events you think these guys they play the same tunes Mm -hmm. i thought i want to i want to do an event i was hungry to do an event anyway yeah so i thought yeah put the idea together Mm -hmm booked a certain set of DJs and mm-hmm. I remember briefing them and saying to them, when you play, yeah. think outside the box. Mm-hmm. You don't have to play No One Else by Total. Mm-hmm. You don't have to play Doing It by LL Cool J. You yeah. can step outside the box because 90s is an era of music that everyone yeah. of a certain age knows mm-hmm. and they should know every tune, yeah. even the tune yeah, that yeah. was number 12 on the yeah. album. Yeah, 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 you know yeah. what I mean? Of course. Yeah, yeah. so it, that's where the, it came from there really. Mm-hmm. And then obviously as time's gone on, it's evolved where I started booking different DJs because, yeah. you know, you go out, you hear someone play, you think, ooh, 
Yeah. Okay. So in terms of, well, I was kind of just going to touch on that. In terms of, obviously, for your first event, how did you pick your DJs? Was it people you already knew, or was it a case of? Yeah, yeah. There's more people I knew. So I had Top Cats on there. Family shout out Top Cats from day one. Yeah. Conspiracy family shout out him from day one. Mm -hmm. Um. I booked a crew called Perfect Gents as well. Shout out Data and Spice. Mm -hmm. They used to book me for their events. Yeah. Um, and I thought, yeah, give them a run. You know what I mean? Like, they mm -hmm. done the warm-up set, which was, yeah, they, they done well. Yeah. But as I said, as time's gone on, they've mm -hmm. kind of taken a step back from the DJ. But right. Conspiracy and Top Cats are still involved fully in the scene, so. Okay. Yeah. Okay. <clears throat> so, in terms of setting the event up, so I wanted like, kind of get into the nitty-gritty, but without, like, dotting the I's and crossing the T's. Right, right. So... In terms of you saying, all right, cool, here's the idea for an event, this is what I want to do, and then saying, all right, I'm going to have this event in this venue, line up these DJs, I want you to just kind of just kind of delve into the process a bit more in terms of what you need to do to be able to, say, create an event from start to finish, just so that people out there who are DJs don't necessarily know how to run an event can do that. Um, obviously, first and foremost, you need to have an idea, mm -hmm. and you need to be very confident that your idea is going to work yeah um selecting a venue is just preferences to where you want to do it, i guess okay i mean i chose Reed because it was down the road mm -hmm. from where i am it was a venue that no one at all was using yeah. as well and it was nice mm -hmm. so i thought let me give it a go mm -hmm. i had to twist his arm a little bit to get to use it but shout out to mark at Reva again yeah. um but after the first event he was happy with how it went Okay. But in terms of putting, like I said, you've got to be very positive and confident that you can pull it off. Yeah. The way I put, do my events is, when I do my lineup, mm -hmm. I think, right, I need a DJ that can play this, a DJ that can play that. Yeah. So I book DJs on their strengths. I'm okay. not just, oh, when I book this person because of his name. Because what yeah, you yeah. find is you might pick a lineup, have six big names, and then mm -hmm. think, well, where are they going to play? Who's right, going to yeah. do that? So who's going to, you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. That's how I do my thing. Okay. Cool, cool. Um, so just in terms of contacting the venue, is it a case of you just say, I want to have the event, and they kind of give you a thing and say, yeah, or do you have to like put together like almost like a little business plan or... Yeah, almost, yeah. You yeah. kind of, you ring the venue mm -hmm. uh, or you email them. Better to email first. Yeah. Uh, but what I do with the email, I don't put too much info into it. I just mm -hmm. say the age group, mm -hmm. which I think is, is quite key for some venues as well. Yeah, yeah, that's um, true. The dress code again, which I think is quite key for some venues, mm -hmm. and the music policy, because as you know, mm -hmm. some venues when you put certain genres of music yeah. straight away they're like, don't want it. Yeah. yeah. So mm -hmm. put that information in. Don't mm -hmm. say your lineup or anything like that. Mm -hmm. If they like it, then they'll get back to you. Yeah. Then you take it from there. Cool. Go down and have a meet with them, and, and yeah, yeah, just I like what a bit yeah, easier yeah. to say. Yeah. yeah cool. You know. Okay. Cool. Good stuff. Um. So in terms of development for yourself, obviously you have that event at the moment, but you're doing other events as well as that. Yeah. So in terms of where do you see yourself growing to at a certain point where you stop DJing and just run events or will you always be involved in... That's a good question. <laughs> That's a good question. Um, oh, I enjoy DJing. Yeah. I still do. Mm -hmm. um, I think at the age I'm at now, mm -hmm. 41, by the way, um, I'm not going to get booked every week because of what I specialise in. Mm -hmm. Well, I say that in terms of the city circuit that I'm, I'm well known in, mm -hmm. I'm not going to get booked every week in that circuit because the scene moves so quickly, as you know. Yeah. A lot of events now want upfront new music yeah. throughout the whole night which is fine mm -hmm. that's that's how they they work yeah. um I, i'm gonna get booked to the odds week in a month so maybe two weeks out of a month from now mm -hmm. so it then makes me think yeah maybe i do want to put on an event yeah not every month mm -hmm. but i want an event where it, it keeps me involved in the scene somewhat right um yeah i mean it is it's a that's a very tough question it is okay because i, I still would like to be out every week yeah, yeah, yeah you know so course. i think that's for me to look at mm -hmm. where i am mm -hmm. is there any other avenues i could go down yeah to yeah. still maybe play out every week yeah yeah, yeah. Okay. so i'm actually in the process of doing that at the moment cool all right another topic that 
I wanted to talk to you about is to do with um, warm-up DJs. Yes. Because I um, saw that you put obviously a post up saying that you're not, at this current point in time, you're not really active as, or you're not really active for whatever reason, but you're available to do warm-up slots if required. Um, and I think uh, quite an interesting topic in the DJ space at the moment is around warm-up DJs. Um, what what is your view on warm up DJs and what what say if you're booking in a warm up DJ for your event what would you expect from them etc. Going forward. Right. Okay. Um, another good question. <laughs> like this. All right. In terms of my DJ career at the moment, mm -hmm. as I said, I still get booked mm -hmm. at least twice a month. Anyway, shout mm -hmm. out to um, Diverse Nights, James and Junior. Look after me like no other promoter does. Yeah. Got to put that out there for a start. Mm -hmm. um, I know they've got a lot of haters, but them man look after me. Yeah. Um, I always started off as a warm up DJ anyway, okay. and I think any new DJ coming into this thing needs to start as a warm up DJ. Mm -hmm. As you know, how things are now, music is easy to get hold of. Yeah, yeah. Um, I personally don't like new R&B and hip hop. It might be the odd one or two tunes. I think, yeah, that sounds alright, but I'm not a fan. Mm -hmm. I could easily download the top 20 new R&B and hip-hop tunes, yeah. but I wouldn't know what order to mix them in, what orders to play them right. in, yeah, which yeah, tune yeah. creates them. I'm mm -hmm. not about that. Yeah. As a DJ, I think you need to learn how to be able to play in different parts of the night. The yeah. warm-up DJ is the most important DJ of the night, in my opinion, because they set the tone for how the night's going to follow. Right. Certain events I've been to, you know if the warm-up DJ hasn't been good, okay. because essentially warm-up is... 10 to 12 ish, I would say. Mm -hmm. But if at half 12, that DJ mm. is still trying to get the crowd going, that right. means the DJ that played 11 to 12 didn't get the crowd going. Right, yeah. So the night then doesn't warm up until 2 o'clock. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Just about the time yeah. 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 yeah and it's, that's no good for the crowd. So I think mm -hmm. warm up is vital. What I expect from a warm up DJ is don't come and rinse out the tunes that you're going to play between 1 and 2. You don't need yeah, to yeah. do that. Mm -hmm. In a warm up, you can play what you want. Mm -hmm. And that's why I enjoy a warm-up set. That's why I've, I put the post out there. Yeah. I'd love to do warm-up sets. Mm -hmm. And when I get booked now, essentially I get booked anytime between 10 and 12, 31-ish, mm -hmm. and 3 till 4. Because right. 3 till 4 is almost like a warm-up set as well, really. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's warming warm down. Yeah. But that's where you get to play yeah, the single. Yeah. Yeah. Right, yeah. yeah. I get that. That's cool. So... I definitely think that's that's a valid point now. Definitely, if your warm up DJ, if you as a warm up DJ is not good, then yeah, yeah, and I think what, as well, a lot of the new DJs mm -hmm. they've got an ego. Right, yeah. Don't want to play warm up. Like, I've been to places, mm -hmm. and new DJs look at you, mm -hmm. look at established men like myself, mm -hmm. and it's like, what are you doing there? Yeah, like, and I just think, mate, if we never open the doors there would be no opportunity for you not to even come and stand in a booth with us. That That's not even a big-headed statement. That's just fact. Yeah. So, again, I think all new DJs, you mm -hmm. need to learn how to do the warm-up set. It is vital. Mm -hmm. Vital. And you learn more about yourself as a DJ as well, I think. Yeah, yeah, of course. I think I over my career, I've definitely understood and know how to obviously pace myself right now. Yeah. Because a lot of the venues that I do, I'm pretty much the only DJ from start to finish. Right. So it's kind of the first two hours are just literally just building up, That's getting right. one over to the dance yeah. floor, yeah. and then you play the bangers in the middle, and then, you know, towards the end is like sing-along. So do you think that another issue that I think I've noticed with a few of the newer DJs is just a patience issue? Because, you, as you said, music is so easy to get a hold of now. They think they can just go do, like, play bangers all night and that will get them through. Um, yeah, what do you think about like the patience thing? Yeah, I think you're right. I think DJs are kind of put on a pedestal, almost mm -hmm. like we're, we're superstars. And I yeah, think yeah. new DJs want to be feel like that, which yeah. is fine, because mm -hmm. that's essentially why you do it. You want to be known, you want to be popular. Mm -hmm. But don't rinse the tunes, because what happens is you ruin the flow of the night. Yeah. Like if you play the top 20 tunes, mm -hmm. top 30 tunes, mm -hmm. In the middle, at once or two, for instance, mm -hmm. and I've seen DJs do it. They'll play like the top ten R&B tunes, the top ten hip hop tunes, the top ten bash tunes. Right. So the next DJ that comes on, mm -hmm. what do you want them to do, man? Yeah. yeah because 
How I structure my nights is I have a warm up set, an early dance hall set, mm. a main army and hip hop set, mm-hmm. a main dance hall set, yeah. then a warm down set. Right, yeah. Because I like my nights to be structured. So that means that if I say to you, you're doing the first dance hall set, mm-hmm. I don't need to play army and hip hop. Right, yeah. I'm not telling you what tunes to play, mm-hmm. but that's the genre I want you to stick in. And mm-hmm. I think a lot of DJs kind of need that structure. Yeah, yeah. Otherwise, so they know. Exactly yeah, yeah what they're... you know, and I think ravers as well. This is very important. Mm. You got to understand how a night works. Mm. So you can't come and ask a DJ at half eleven, twelve o'clock to play the latest <laughs> tune because we're not going to do it. Oh, we're not being right. rude. Mm. We just know how a night works, so we're not yeah. going to do that. So ravers, please don't do that. Just let the promoters and the DJs do their thing. And if you have an issue, contact the promoter afterwards, or mm. contact the DJ afterwards and say, and then we can explain to you. This is how a night works. Mm. Then when you go out in the future, you might know what to expect. Yeah, yeah. Because yeah. yeah. I'm guessing as your your events are now at the moment, the guys that come up to your events to rave, they already know what they're getting. So yeah, they're yeah. less likely to be like, oh, I want you to play Bashman. Yeah, like, why are you right. in the middle of R&B set? Yeah, because they know yeah. who's coming to do that's that. That's right. And what I do with Remember the Time especially, <laughs> I will print the timetable out and I'll place it around the venue. Right, okay, so, so people know what. That's right, don't ask no questions, it's mm-hmm. there, so you know, oh, that DJ's coming on such and sound playing that sort of music. Mm-hmm. Okay, cool. So, in terms of going backwards almost a little bit, mm-hmm. who were the DJs that, as you were coming up, that you were saying, yeah, I want to get to these kind of levels? Um, wow, good question. <laughs> <laughs> um, wow. Well, as I said, when I used to go to Gas Club, mm. Easeback was someone I looked up to in terms of how he'd done a warm-up set. Okay. Um, I used to hear Rampage and yeah. think, wow, like, yeah, solid. Mm-hmm. Um, Galflex, shout out Simon and Dixie, boys, family they are, and I book them now. Mm-hmm. Again, they're legends in the scene. There's yeah. no question about that. And when I used to go out and rave, there's someone you look up to and think, oh, yeah, man. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So, you know, yes, yes. luckily for me, I've come up with a lot of DJs that I kind of looked up to. Okay. So I've had a chance to book them throughout mm-hmm. doing my events because not only doing Remember the Time, I used to do an event called IOU. Okay. With oh, Top Cats and that. Conspiracy. Yes. Yeah, 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 yeah. Um, We need to bring that back, boys. Mm. We need to bring it back. Um so from doing that, I got to book the likes of Big Business, mm. Love Connection, yeah. GMs, um, Smooth Connection at the time, mm-hmm. Raw Vibes. We booked loads of people that, these are DJs that I dj alongside, mm-hmm. but I looked up to thinking, yeah, like, these are yeah, proper, yeah, of course, you know. Of course, definitely. Send the shouts out to Excel for Big Business. Yeah, do you know what? <laughs> Excel, mm-hmm. for me, Mm. is the best DJ on the circuit. When on his day, mm. untouchable. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, Absolutely yeah. untouchable. Shout out Excel. He mate. Him and Simple Simon for me mm. are the top two. Yeah. Got a lot of, not a lot of time for them guys. Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. Very humble. Um so at the moment, what what's your your favourite piece of equipment to use when you're DJ? Like that. I'm guessing when you started, you were starting vinyl. That's right. Yeah, yeah. Um, gone to CDJs yeah, yeah. and now we're on the Serato. Yeah. Yeah. What's your? Um, I still like the CDJ feel of the Serato, mm-hmm. the, the the box. Mm-hmm. Um, I'm, I've got a controller, yeah. and I use it when I do mix CDs at home. Okay. Or if I get booked to do a wedding or Christmas or something, I'm bringing a controller out unless the venue's got decks already. Mm-hmm. But I prefer the decks. When okay. I got the controller, I was like, yeah, I like this. Mm. And then when I went back to the decks, I was like, nah, I, I don't like the controller anymore. <laughs> yeah. You know, there should be more tactile feel, I think, with using the decks yeah. as opposed to the controller. But I'm one of those DJs where whatever equipment's there, mm. I'm just going to use it. I'm yeah. not going to be like, oh, it's a controller, I don't want to use it. Oh, mm. decks are not, you know. Yeah. If, if you can mix, then you can use anything. Yeah. As far as I'm concerned. Cool. All right, so we're going to talk about the DJ circuit for the moment. Um, so one of the questions that I like asking other DJs is, what do you think of the current DJ circuit at the moment in the climate? Um, what do you think needs to be 
like improved and what do you think is great it is at the moment and you should see more of oh <laughs> too far rest, yeah. okay so i think the scene is healthy mm -hmm. um as much as there is a so-called lack of venues yeah promoters are still managing to put on events mm -hmm. um shout out to all the, the djs that are putting on big events mm -hmm. um capital yeah. puts on massive events shout out to him shout out to nate um because capital used to book me quite a lot as well mm -hmm. um what i would say is though what you find with some of these these djs and promoters that are putting on events yeah they're monopolizing the scene okay. which i don't like right i think that yes you've you've done the hard work mm -hmm. or someone else has done the hard work to get the venue for you right i yeah. get that mm -hmm. so you're going to put events in there that's fine yeah. but what you find is sometimes these promoters will throw a date in a venue mm -hmm. and you know deep down inside you can tell they didn't really want to do it but the venue's probably said to them the date's mm -hmm. available do you want yeah, to do yeah. it because i've had a venue say to me and i'm like nah because you just think you're not ready for it yeah, yeah, i yeah. think what they need to do is people who they network with and get on well with i think you've got a good crowd mm -hmm. Say to that person, look, this date's available. Yeah. I don't want it. Mm -hmm. Do you, you want to do so? Try to refuse or Yeah, yeah because yeah. then it it does keep the scene mm -hmm. it, it more open and mm -hmm. there's it's wider as well. Instead yeah. of just saying, right, well, I've got hold of this venue, mm -hmm. I've got hold of that venue. Because people say to me, Oh, like you've got Reaver on lock. No, I haven't. Mm -hmm. I do events in there, yes. Yeah. But if you want to do an event in there, by all means, yeah do it i'll give you the link that's yeah, not a problem do you know what I mean? i'm yeah, not yeah. selfish like that yeah you no know? um but yeah i think it is very healthy there's a lot of good new djs out as well mm -hmm. um definitely yeah there's 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 quite a few i need to get out more mm -hmm. so i can hear them not necessarily that i'll book them right. but you just, just want to see yeah types, uh, yeah yeah definitely and i can i i can say with no hesitation like i've seen I'll just read off a few DJs that I've seen. So you've got FaZe, who's a guy that's been working within my circle quite a bit. Right. Great DJ. Super Mids, shut down Canterbury one time when I was there. And I was right. like, yeah, definitely need to network with him. Um, you've got Caramel, who's coming through, who's a lady I've been spending some time with. So she's doing her bits at the moment, which is, I'm happy for her. Um, yeah, there's... There's loads of loads of new DJs that are coming through, and they're they're naturally talented. So you don't have to spend a lot of time right. showing them how to do that. Yeah. You just say, "Boom, this is what I want you to play." You know, go and that's why I'm, I mean the scene is healthy because mm. you're telling me names of DJs I've never heard of. Right. So yeah. your scene is healthy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. My scene is healthy because, like I said earlier, mm -hmm. I'm only out now maybe twice a month, but right. I'm still out. So you've got the likes of myself, big business. Love Connection, Invasion, mm -hmm. Longers, Conspiracy, yeah. Top Cats, I'm trying to think of else. Yeah. If I'm forgetting you, I don't mean to. Be our flex. Yeah. Um, These are all people that I'm planning to interview at some stage and, as and, well. And so. we're all still yeah. relevant. Yeah. Slick. Yeah. Then you've got like Capital, Bill Gates, mm. Nate, um, DJ Lani, mm -hmm. um, Mad Influence. Yeah. These are people that were kind of under us, but mm -hmm. are now flourishing. Yeah. 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 Um, trying to think who else I'm missing out. Like I said, once again, apologies if I've missed you out, mm -hmm. but there's a lot of us still doing still it. Keeping, doing it of course. keeping what you would call the, the city circuit alive. Mm -hmm. So, as you mentioned, obviously, your would you say your core is the city, or are you quite happy to now like, branch out and do different things? Because I'm seeing guys like, milk tree who are doing events now in birmingham and a few other djs like that so do you think that's you could see yourself doing something like that well like doing national bookings yeah right? i think I'd, I'd like to because i think in london mm. we assume that we're the best djs right yeah but, and you know i've got to say we are sorry <laughs> anyone out of london, but we are yeah. um so yeah of course you want to test yourself mm -hmm. in other areas mm. um like you said, obviously, I'm, I'm a city circuit DJ. Mm -hmm. So the city is obviously EC. Mm -hmm. But I will go to deep south, mm -hmm. deep north, mm -hmm. deep east, deep west if I have to. Mm -hmm. Because you get the booking, yeah, yeah, I'll, I'll do it, you know. But if I ever had the opportunity to, to 
do events elsewhere than here, do a hundred percent. Cool, cool. All right. Uh, how we do for time? All right, cool. So I've got a almost a challenge oh, for wow. you. <laughs> so it's going to be an interesting one. All right. So as you saw with the last interview I did, I asked, uh, gave a scenario, and she had to give me three tracks right. for each scenario. So I'm going to do the same with you. Oh, jeez. But we're going <laughs> to have a little bit. It's not going to be the same scenario. Because uh, I know that you're you're a football man. <laughs> right. Someone's your team. Yep. So Talk we're, we're, well. <laughs> <laughs> we're going to do a scenario based around, loosely around football. Right. Okay. So the first track I want from you, and it can be, it can be R&B or it can be any track. But as we know, Tottenham are doing well right now, but they're not. They're not winning yeah, stuff not. at the moment. Yeah. So, what track would you pick if Tottenham won the Premier League? What would be your go-to track to oh say, "Oh my goodness, I'm playing this the moment the last goal or the minute the last whistle is blown." Um, wow. Hmm. Wow. Maybe it's got to be a hype tune, hmm. an impact tune. Yeah. Maybe like DMX up in here, maybe because if we done that, I think I would lose my mind. So I think, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> cool. All right. Cool. Scenario two now is you. You've had a good one in the Champions League. You get to the final and you lose on a last minute penalty. So you've gone to I don't know. You've gone to the family's house. What tune would you ask them to play for you to be like, listen, it's all good. Next year we'll go again. Like, what's that tune that makes you think like, oh, all right, cool. It was a bit bad, but you know, don't worry about it next time. <sighs> so it's almost like your your pick me up tune when you're feeling not happy for whatever reason. Um, well, it's got to be a hard beat tune I'm thinking that. Mm. Um. Let's say it can be tracked for off the smart or whatever more. I would say Big Bob, I like your style. Okay. Yeah. Hmm. Not, not a tune I'm familiar with, but I'm definitely gonna look at it. Yeah, it's, it's a new that's when, you, when you hear it you'll know it. Right. You'll, okay. Yeah, you when you hear it you'll know it. But that that's a tune that I'll play regular. Hmm. Yeah. Okay, cool. Um all right, cool. So we know Arsenal's arch rivals of Tottenham. I mean, yeah, so you just not only have Tottenham <laughs> beaten Arsenal, which we do, yeah, you've <laughs> knocked them out of the cup. So, yeah. what tune are you sending to your Arsenal friend to say, yeah, you, 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 you suck and you lost? Like, um, just to wind them up even more. Vibes Cartel, touch your bottom. <laughs> 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 nice. <Yeah>. Uh, cool. <laughs> <laughs> that's that's a good tune actually, I like that. Alright, cool. I know what to send you away when, <laughs> <laughs> when the opposite is true. Alright, cool. So final few questions. Yeah, um So we're middle of twenty eighteen at the moment. What do you see yourself doing or what do you see the next movement is for Godfather? Um, I think I just want to try and through the remaining years of my DJ career mm -hmm. test myself in other areas okay. so be that out of London be that in London but mm -hmm. areas that I don't usually play because playing in the city mm -hmm. I enjoy it I, I love it yeah. but I want to see if I can play that way in Shoreditch or Camden or something okay. like that. Yeah, see, because yeah. I know that they they love hip hop and R&B there, mm -hmm. but do they like Drake, right. Migos, or do they want to hear what I'm going to come with? Mm -hmm. So I think um, I, I want to try and get into that kind of avenue. Mm -hmm. um, I'm putting on or helping my little my brother Sticksy D Aaron Sticks. Shout out to him. But this old school garage and house DJ on the road. That's facts. Mm -hmm. um, I'm helping him put on an event as well. Okay. Um, it's going to be a big event. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, because as much as I'm an R&B and hip hop specialist, mm -hmm. I love old school garage. Yeah. Like 
I used to rave to old school garage. Sometimes oh, I think, yeah. why did I not play garage? Yeah. Because, you know, I just loved R&B more. Yeah, you yeah. know. So, that's another avenue I'm thinking to go down into as well. But, okay. I'm still happy to take city bookings mm-hmm. because, as I said, I love the city. It, yeah. You know, it's, it's where I started. Um, I've got to send a big shout out to Lloyd Laff because he was the one who opened the doors for me to get onto the city circuit in the first place. Mm-hmm. So the best event I've ever played at, yeah. bar in IOU, you remember the time, obviously. Yeah. But Soul Deep <laughs> was the standout city event mm. at Silks and Spice, whoever remembers that venue. Um, mm-hmm. And that was all down to Lloyd Life opening the doors for a lot of us, really, mm-hmm. to, to be in the city. Okay, cool. Um, <clears throat> what's on your iPod at the moment? So every week I kind of, not every we can kind of talk about albums I'm listening to mm-hmm. and stuff like that. So at the moment, I'm still listening to Fonte's No News Is Good News from Little Brother, which right. is, came out a couple, couple weeks ago now. Great album, so definitely go and check it out. And Glam as well, um, Oxy, Oxygen, so it's spelled A-U-X and then the rest of Oxygen. Wow, okay. That's a great album as well. So what are you currently listening to? Um, obviously, as you know, I'm old school, isn't it? So... <laughs> Um, it's a toss up between A Marie's first album mm. or T Dr. Moses. That's what I kind of flick between. Okay. But usually A Marie's first album. I don't know why I just keep drawing myself to yeah. to listening to it because it is good. Mm. So fair enough. Best track on the album. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> Probably talking to me. Okay. Yeah. Good track. Yeah. Definitely a good track. Cool. All right. So almost coming to the end of today's interview. So where can people find you online, connect with you, network with you, that sort of thing? Okay. So Instagram, um, at DJ Godfather 76 mm-hmm. and Twitter, Godfather underscore DJ. They're the best places to kind of, catch. I'm trying to use my Twitter a lot more now. Okay. Um, it's easy to use. Mm-hmm. Um, I'm on Facebook as well. Junior Murdoch, M-U-R-D-O-C-K. Um, yeah. Any of those you can find me on. You want to book me, you want to chat to me, whatever. DJs that might want some advice on how to put a set together if they want to get booked or, you know, I might be able to bully a promoter for you now. I, don't things, <laughs> but I might be able to speak to a promoter and say, listen, I've listened to this guy and he ain't too bad. Yeah. Give him a go because I don't put on events regularly. So I, I can't, you know. I can't say, but, yeah. Um, yeah, that's where you can find me. So look me up. Cool, cool. All right. Um... I was going to ask you something else, but I cannot remember. Maybe we'll do another interview. Yeah, And then when I remember that, I will ask you again. <laughs> um, <laughs> no, it's been a pleasure yeah, man, having you on the show. <laughs> Definitely. So, def- uh, as I said before, stay tuned. Uh, YouTube guys, subscribe, turn on notifications so you know when I'm uploading the videos. It's definitely going to be on a weekly basis. I've got great DJs lined up, but I'm not going to name them till we sat down and spoke about it. Um, yeah, so the iTunes guys, just subscribe and let me know your feedback. And same for SoundCloud guys as well. So until next time, peace out. I've been JSG. He's been Godfather. Wicked.